Nearly a dozen Democrats in Congress have now called on President Biden to reconsider his bid for re-election. But the president has vowed to fight on. Joining us right now to talk about leadership, the often di oftentimes difficult act of giving up the reins, is Arthur Brooks. He is American Enterprise Institute's president emeritus and a pro professor at Harvard. And Arthur, watching all of this, what are the lessons you're kind of taking away? Well, I mean, obviously, it was pretty disturbing what we saw last week, and a lot of people are, are questioning President Biden's capacity to lead for another four years. But beyond that, what he's, act, what he's doing is acting incredibly defensively toward the people who care about him the most. And this brings up an important point for pretty much everybody who watches Squawk Box. Leaders walk, watch this program. And the question is, are you writing the end to your own story? I mean, leaders have to do this. If you want to be remembered in a good way and leave your organization in a good place, you can't just write your story as you go along and hope it ends well. You have to write the end to your own book as well. What is the end of your career? Plan it out. If you don't, it's going to be some form of what we've been seeing in politics for the past two weeks. You know, you say the people who care about him most, but his wife, his family, they're standing around him and saying, yes, we want him to continue running. At least that's the narrative we've heard. Who knows what's really going on? I mean, it's one of the things that we know right now is that you can t you can have an administration that's insulating itself to such an extent that not even the media, let alone the American public, know what's going on. By the way, that's very disturbing. This is of great national importance to all of us. And the fact that we didn't know any of this suggests to us that we that, uh, that the government is willing to gaslight us to a very large extent. So who knows what the interior conversations going on are, but the people who love us as leaders should be telling us the truth and and we should be in charge of what's going on with the end of our own careers as well. Joe's made the, the valid point that this is someone who has already gone through the primary, the Democratic primary, and has won all of those votes uh, from those who will be at the convention to be uh, nominated. And everybody, How do you everybody was, that? Yeah, everybody was fine with it, Arthur. And, and don't tell me they didn't know, because we all knew, sort of. <laughs> Can I write my own exit? It is taking me out on a slab, is that okay to, to have that as my, as the end of my, can I plan that for, for the way I'm going to go? Or is yeah, that, don't I, do that. Yeah, why? I, I don't recommend that, Joe. Well, part of the reason <laughs> is because you will be remembered as somebody who went out kicking I, that's and screaming. That's fine. I'll be here till then. <laughs> but here's yeah, the point. Who cares what they say after you're gone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, also, you want to leave an organization that's in good shape. You want to leave a country or a family that's in good shape. And that's what leadership is really all about. Look, Great leadership is measured by what happens after you finish, because you're responsible for what happens after you finish. You know, uh, one of the one of the leaders of one of the founders of Carlisle, a close friend of mine, Dan Daniello, one time told me. I asked him when I was leaving AEI. I said, "How do you know when it's time to leave a CEO job, Dan?" And Dan said, "Because he's you know he's seen the beginning and end of hundreds of CEOs' careers as one of the founders of the private equity world." And he said, "Look, there's only two choices. You can leave before you're ready." or you can leave on somebody else's terms. Choose yeah. wisely. Leave a little in the tank. Leave before it's the very end. Don't go out kicking and screaming around the people who really should are saying, come on, dad, give me the keys. Nobody wants this. I guess, I, I, okay, let me put it in another analogy. What about somebody like Tom Brady, who mm. was basically told he had to leave the New England Patriots? They were sorry about that decision. Yeah, they were, and, and it came time when it was time for him to leave his career, and he did, and I'm sure it was, it was a struggle for him. He knew a little bit better than they did that he had a little bit more in the tank, a lot more in the tank, as a matter of fact, but yeah, he well, did leave, leave and we, we know it was hard for him because he really enjoyed playing football, and it was his entire identity. By the way, there's one more point about this. For leaders who are watching us right now, and they have nothing else but their own careers, that's the problem. Because retiring means dying. Retiring means right. non-existing. And what you need to do is to start cultivating your spiritual life, your family life, your friendships, the love relationships in your life, before it's time to go so you have something to go to. Is that what you did when you left AEI? Yeah, I really did. And part of it was because the, the, the advice that I got from Dan Daniello and many other trusted leaders whom, whom I asked, including political leaders who had left gracefully and not, and, and not with this kind of force and not with this sort of resistance. And so I got ready. I announced 16 months in advance. I worked very hard to get a great successor, somebody who's going to be better than me running the organization. And I doubled and tripled down on all the things that I wanted to do in the subsequent areas of my life professionally. And and the love relationships and my faith life, which was so important to me. 
you know, Arthur, you've, you talk to a lot of people all the time. You're always asking these sort of questions. And I just wonder um, what you think is happening behind the scenes and what you think the future is for the country on this point, because we're not just talking about a CEO position. We're talking about the head of a country. Yeah, no, I think there's... On? I think it's a it's a huge mess behind the scenes to be sure because nobody knows quite what to do given the fact that you have the the, the leader of the free world who's resistant to leaving and many many people around the country and around the world who thinks it's time for him to go and they don't exactly know how to do that because we have a we have a system that that lends itself to seniority it lends itself to loyalty it doesn't lend itself to merit you look the greatest country in the world should be a meritocracy and not a gerontocracy based on loyalty and tenure that's a big problem on its face but here Here's the point of, of all this after all this is said and done. America is going to be fine. Why is America going to be fine? Because the democracy is actually stronger than these ridiculous things that we're seeing going on right now, the drama that we're seeing, which is kind of political entertainment to a certain extent. And also we notice that what really governs the stability of our country is the free enterprise system and capitalism. And that continues apace. That's the reason that despite all this craziness, people still watch Squawk Box and not just the political shows. I mean, ever since Clyburn decided Biden would be better than, than Sanders, the Democrats have been whipping this horse and riding it until Thursday night of that debate. So I have no compassion or, or pity whatsoever for the position that they've put themselves in knowingly, Arthur. They get Dean Phillips had no chance for RFK. Nobody else had a chance. And they right. didn't care that as long as they could, as long as, as Joe Biden was president and, and they could control what was going on, they were only too happy to dupe the entire country that this guy was sharp as a tack. And the media was complicit in the entire exercise. I, so it's I have disturbing. no pity whatsoever in, in, yeah, in it's this. It's very disturbing. Look, Joe, it's very disturbing that, that we have an administration that cares more about staying in power than they care about honesty with the American people about what's best for the country. I, I share your concern about that completely. But sooner or later, the truth comes out. And now it does. And the American system will be able to handle it. Let's just see what happens. That's all I have to say. It's going to you know, be a wild ride, to be sure. Arthur, you're making an argument for a new generation of leaders, younger, all the way across. Right. I mean, just the idea of meritocracy, not loyalty. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is incredibly important. And part of the problem that we have in our system right now is that the, the two-party system is, you know, it's governed by these private organizations that are gatekeepers to who can actually get ahead in the political system. We don't, we have democracy sort of at the general election level, but anything before that is actually not very democratic. And that's the biggest problem. That's the reason that we see a political class that's getting older and older and older and younger people, a lot of whom are, are trying to get into business and want to be successful leaders. Leaders, they're, they're watching us right now. They say, why would I get into politics? Why would I get into politics where I have to wait until I'm 75 years old to have a shot at these, at these you know, in, important positions in leadership? And by the way, why would I do it when all I'm going to have is members of the media pawing through my trash and, and having to explain something I did in college to my kids? Why do I need that? That's exactly what's going on with our political system. And it's got to change if we're going to be excellent. Arthur Brooks, as always, uh we appreciate it, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Joe. All right. See you, Arthur. We'll live.